Um, hi, uh, this is Fu Jin. So today I'm, I'm honored to do a uh, brief introduction to Hokkien, uh, one of my mother tongues. Um, I grew up in Fujian province, especially the southern part of the province, which um, is the orange of Hokkien. And um, I was educated in the UK for my undergrad and master, both in linguistics and applied linguistics. Um, at the moment, I'm a public relation manager in Ireland. So um, really great to share my experience. So today's presentation will briefly cover the four parts in the review of Hokkien, um, its um, phonology and some examples from uh, mythology and syntax. And lastly, um, I will touch base on the current status of Hokkien from sociolinguistic point of view. Hokkien, um, it's also called Minnan language. So Minnan here, uh, means the southern part of Fujian. Um, broadly, uh, a lot of varieties are actually derived from um, Hokkien uh, with immigrants who migrate from Fujian province to the other province in mainland China, for example, in Hainan province, the small island in southern part of China, and then Zhejiang province, um, the province north to Fujian province. Uh, one thing is that if you cross over a mountain and then you meet with another person who uh, speaks Hokkien, you have difficulty understand him because your accents across uh, the two sides of the mountain will be very different. But in today's presentation, I'm not, I'm not going to cover all the varieties. I'm just going to cover Hokkien um, across Fujian province and Taiwan, so across Taiwan Street. In the map, the red zone here represents Fujian province. The three cities, um, Zhangzhou, Quanzhou, and Xiamen, strictly speaking, are the orange of um, Hokkien. And then um, and then three more cities, Taipei, Tainan, and Kaohsiung from Taiwan. So um, people from Zhangzhou and Quanzhou are um, the first two communities that um, develop Hokkien. My parents are from Zhangzhou, so I spent the majority of my childhood there. But I moved to Xiamen after secondary school. So basically, I think my accents are a mix of Zhangzhou accent and Xiamen accent. This year, um, Hokkien um, ranks 35th of most spoken language in the world with 49 million speakers covering both first language speakers and second language speakers. And it's also uh, the most spoken lingua franca among overseas Chinese communities in Asia Pacific countries like Singapore and Malaysia. So many of my um, relatives, my aunties or my um, brothers move over to Singapore without even learning English because like they could rely on um, Hokkien um, for like um, their daily life. And I think you could come up with the um, uh, just the Amoy stir fry sauce in Asian markets here or um, in Tesco or even dance. So this is a brand from um, Xiamen. So you can see A M O Y Amoy here is the uh, the Hokkien um, pronunciation of Xiamen. So uh, the, the 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 food company here uses the make uh, the Hokkien pronunciation of the city. So actually, many linguists or um, many um, Hokkien speakers have been uh, debating around the status of Hokkien being classified as a language or as a dialect of Chinese. And one reason that such conversation, such argument is still going on is that actually Hokkien lacks um, a unified uh, or a standardized written forms. Um, at the moment, um, how to write Hokkien is still like a mixture of traditional Chinese characters plus the Taiwanese Zhuyin system. So Zhuyin system is the system that Taiwanese people use to spell Mandarin Chinese spoken in Taiwan. Although there are like lack of unified written forms of Hokkien, um, in 2009, Taiwan Ministry of Education still published 
a brochure of Taiwanese Southern Ming recommended characters, which include 700 high frequency characters as recommendation. And so you could see on the right side, uh, this just saying example that I take from the brochure published by uh, ministry. So you could see, for example, uh, the word here, xia, uh, which means a car. Uh, then qin jiong here, uh, which means very much like something or almost like something. And then, for example, qian pang here means um, scent of some um, characters uh, nailed down by Ministry of Education to be used as the um, the formal characters um, for for Hokkien. Um, the characters are basically um, selected based on um, the three principles. Um, either um, they borrow traditional characters from Chinese that both the meaning and the pronunciation are um, the same. For example, zui um, here means uh, water. So the character is same as modern Chinese or Tamen here means uh, blind. So um, the two characters are actually borrowed from ancient Chinese characters instead of modern Chinese characters because like um, modern Chinese use Shi being the two characters here to uh, represent um, the status of the blind. And the two, the other two categories are either borrowed Chinese characters of similar meanings um, but different pronunciations or um, similar pronunciations but different meanings. Um, for example, um, nothing here in Mandarin, uh, it's Wu, uh, while in Hokkien it's Bo, um, but the meanings are the same. Or um, uh, Ma here, so um, in Hokkien it means also, um, but in uh, Mandarin, I mean, it's a modal particle to, to be put at the end of a sentence. Um, then, so these are some um, examples of how uh, the ministry are cho is uh, choosing the, uh, the characters to represent Hokkien. Move over to phonology. Although there are several systems developed uh, to be used for Hokkien, the mainstream system used at the moment is Taiwanese romanization system, which is derived from Taiwan language phonetic alphabet. It is published by Taiwan Ministry of Education in 2006. So the timeline here is quite clear. The ministry published the, uh, the romanization system first in 2006 and three years after they published the characters recommendation brochure. And the other system, for example, Minan Romanization System developed by um, a professor from Xiamen University in 1983 wasn't actually um, put into massive use. In Hokkien, um, according to um, TRS, um, we have 18 consonants um, covered basic um, consonants like bilabial, vela, glotto, and dental. And we have six basic vowels. B, uh, they are uh, a, e, u, e, u, o. And then in similar to Cantonese, like uh, Hokkien also use some consonants as the backs of vowels and even the glottal uh, H uh, to be put at the end, at the back position of vowels. And then there are eight tones in um, Hokkien, but you could see that, well, this again is taken directly from the brochure published by um, the Ministry of Education. So you could see here the, the six tone is blank here because like the sixth tone is very much assimilated to the second tone. So, so basically the two sort of um, uh, merged a bit of the syllable structures. The common syllable structures, uh, again, will be uh, consonants to be put um, in the initial position of the syllables and plus vowels. And then there are three positions of vowels like front, central, and back. Uh, e and U can be put as front, 
and then the other vowels put at central position and then you could see that there are different groupings of vowels um, like um, an or un uh, which is nasalized and then um, the other some other vowels and some consonant vowels um, would be put at the back position of vowel then plus tones and two examples of how the vowels are grouped the word big dua so uh, the diver song here will be u plus a and then the character for horizontal is hua and then for triver song the word which represents magnificent or hero is hyong so for the a tones as we mentioned the sixth tone is basically the same as the second tone. On the right side, you can see there are two um, examples of the A tones. So the two examples, the two sentences are actually including like um, A tones within one uh, sentence. For example, the whole sentence is sa de ko kwa lang e pi so these are tones from one to a and here you can see this means high uh, high pitch medium pitch and low pitch so uh, the first tone is a high level the second tone it falls from high to 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 medium so uh, and call it's lower qua it's short and medium uh, la so a, a little bit rise from um, medium low to medium high and a is very much like um, day again you can see that tone uh, two and six basically the same and then uh, p is medium and longer and then uh, dip um, is like the higher version of tone four the sentence itself uh, doesn't mean much so uh, shirt short trousers wide person, short, nose, straight. Uh, the second interesting example here is um, about animals. A kinds of animals represent A kinds of tones. So um, lion is sai, um, a tiger, uh, ho, uh, leopard, bull, uh, turtle. The turtle is right above uh, the head of monkey. Um, turtle is B and uh, monkey, gao, uh, dog, gao, and then uh, the elephant is chung, and then the deer is lo. Put it together, it would be sai, ho, bo, bi, gao, gao, chung, lo. So again, if you refer to illustration here, um, the, uh, the differences between tones um, uh, noticeable. So if there are basic tones, then of course there will be change of tones. Um, I will touch three um, pr uh, principles um, from the, uh, the Sunday of tones in Hokkien. So the basic principle is that um, the last syllable uh, will remain as its basic tones, uh, but the preceding syllable will be changed to higher pitches so over within a sentence or within a word then uh, usually it's uh, the tones uh, the tone flows are changed from uh, higher uh, pitches to, to medium or even lower pitches take the duplicated um, adjectives as an example so tone one move over to seven seven move over to three to two and to one and uh, there are two divisions um, for five. For, so tone five is either changed to seven or three. Um, it depends. For example, like the northern part of Taiwan being Taipei. Uh, so the accent there will be, uh, uh, tone five will be changed over to three. But in southern part of Taiwan, like um, the more, the more traditional communities uh, like Tainan or Kaohsiung, uh, Tong Fai will change over to seven. And then the, uh, the rest of the tones being like Tong Fai uh, will change to A, A to four, 
uh, especially with uh, consonant vowels or glottal stop pitch here. So I take um, these two as example. Smiley in single adjective or in basic tone is chiu. Um, so it's tone three. But if you duplicated them, it will be chiu chiu. So the preceding syllable, its tone three has changed to tone two. Similarly, uh, the change from two to one. So the basic tones of code in Hokkien, uh, Lin, so it's tone two, but the preceding, the first Lin is changed to tone one. So it's Lin Lin, um, again, um, higher pitch to medium to lower pitch. So the second principle of Sunday um, will be that pronouns will be um, assimilated to preceding syllables, which are either one, uh, tone one, three, or seven. Um, for example, here um, to give you, so the basic tone of uh, you is uh, the, and then um, uh, together it will be holy. So here the uh, the pronunciation is assimilated to ho. Then um, the third principle is double sandy. For syllables ending in the glottal H and having tone four, you apply the normal sandy twice. So in the diagram here, it will be four, uh, change to two and change to one. So for example, beta uh, te. So it means want to read books. Um, so again, here, the basic tones of bet is tone four. And then the principle is applied twice. So it becomes tone one. So a bit on the uh, lexicon. Um, so two famous borrow words in um, English will be ketchup and tea. So these two words are actually from Hokkien. So um, ketchup in Hokkien, it's pronounced as ketchup. Uh, so ketchup, yeah, it's very much like ketchup in, in English, but um, in Mandarin, um, it's jiang uh, or fan jiang in the word tea. In Hokkien, it's de, and in Mandarin, it's cha. So, of course, you could tell that um, uh, the borrowed words in English tea is uh, closer to um, Hokkien de. Another feature that is more noticeable are the Japanese loan words into Hokkien spoken in Taiwan, but not Hokkien spoke in Fujian province. According to a report from Ministry of Education, there are 170 loan words from Japanese. For example, um, bus. So Hokkien um, borrows like basu from Japanese, but in Hokkien spoken in Fujian province, it's Gong Chia. Next, I'm going to mention about morphological side. So, for example, at here. So, one of the two um, um, functions um, I refer to here, um, the second example here. So, Gua E Te. So, uh, the possessive meaning here, or it could be um, representing like peace, so like uh, so two persons. And then another interesting example is the, um, the function words ho. So in its uh, the traditional meaning, like uh, the very, the, like the essence uh, meaning is to give something. For example, teacher Lim gives me books. Lim lo su ho gua te. So here ho means uh, to give. But uh, the other two functions will be uh, passive or uh, the preposition of verb. For example, I was beaten by him. Gua ho yi pa. Or um, I will let you die. 
what hodi si. And, um, I illustrated an in, in, um, interesting Taiwan film here. It's a gangster film called Monga. Uh, Monga is one of the districts in Taiwan. And then back to like 1970s, 80s, a lot of young gangsters um, are united there. And then they usually like before fighting, they usually like shout out to each other saying that I will let you die. Uh, it's also um, another interesting example, uh, the function of ho. And then um, another example is the plurality of Hokkien. So how does Hokkien uh, fulfill uh, the function of plurality? So it would be singular pronouns um, plus a plural reference. And in Hokkien, it's N, so the nasalization vowel. Uh, so in Hokkien, uh, me or I is guo. When it's nasalized, guan, that means we in plural forms, but excluding you. And then if it's long, again, it's nasalized, but it's we, including you. If uh, you would like to say you, in singular form, it's li. And then when it's nasalized, so lin, uh, in plural forms. And then the third pronoun will be um, i. Um, so when it's nasalized, uh, yin, uh, it means lei. Lastly, um, how is Hokkien used in um, the two uh, main streets? In Fujian province, in mainland China, Mandarin, of course, is the, uh, the only official language. In 2001, um, there was an official Mandarin promotion campaign um, issued by the Ministry of Education in China. So basically, to promote Mandarin um, over any other um, dialects and um, I think this is somehow like linked towards um, the government's ambition to um, raise the, uh, the level of literacy among the population. 2001 was the year I entered uh, primary school and since that year I wasn't allowed to speak Hokkien in um, campus because that's one of the assessments for top students each year not to speak um, heritage language but speak uh, Mandarin in campus. My parents always try to like um, remind me uh, the importance of Hokkien so at home they always try to like talk me in Hokkien only. And, but recent years, I would say there are some rising trends in uh, protection of heritage languages. Although there are some like um, reading of Hokkien channels or um, Hokkien dramas or TV series in um, province or TV of Fujian, um, I would say like they're uh, nowhere close to uh, mainstream TV shows in mainland China. And of course, there are ongoing courses and researches and applications developed for um, Hokkien speech, for example. This is a screenshot of the, um, the Hokkien speech production app um, deve developed by uh, the speech lab in Xiamen University. Things are pretty um, different and more advanced um, in uh, Taiwan, as Hokkien is already um, uh, said as the uh, one of the official languages in Taiwan. So a bit of history here, Kuomintang uh, was defeated and uh, escaped over to uh, Taiwan. When the troops and the people they brought uh, from mainland China to Taiwan set, finally settled down in Taiwan, so there are basic two groups of people, the outside province person, people who don't speak Hokkien, and then the other major community will be the original residents. So original province person, uh, these people speak um, Hokkien. Um, if they are Han ethnic group, I mean, that means that, it, that they are not one of the minorities living up in Highland. 
So these people are basically、um, Fujian immigrants who migrated to Taiwan since like Ming and Qing dynasty in 1948 to reinforce their、um, power. Only Mandarin Chinese was the official national language, and all the other heritage languages were forbidden by Kuomintang government. But like、uh, since nineteen eighties, nineties, and entering the new century,、uh, we would see a return of mother tongue education, where、um, all elementary school students、uh, would be offered、uh, to learn. Uh, their mother tongue, and then the majority, of course, being、um, Hokkien. Then teacher who would like to teach Hokkien in primary or secondary schools would also need to secure their teacher qualification、uh, from Ministry of Education as well.、Um, so the two examples here is the、uh, one of the test books in、um, used in、uh, primary schools in Taiwan. And the title, the topic will be, um, 家的拜贵 So, uh, what day is it today? And then, um, nowadays in Taiwan, you can also see a lot of like, um, slogans, um, in Hokkien. So this sentence is actually in Hokkien. So, uh, 进来报名 This is the um. The slogan I took from the,、uh, the teacher qualification website.、Um, so it means hurry up and submit your、um, application.、Um, so these are all examples of how Hokkien is more、um, developed, more、um, standardized,、um, widely used and taught in、um, Taiwan with the status of being one of the official. Uh, languages, uh, but still,、uh, while I was an exchange student in Taiwan,、um, I encountered many、um, situations where I do I I spoke Hokkien with the elder generation, for example, in bus, and then they are very surprised that、uh, the as a young person I still、um, speak Hokkien. And then、uh, one of the、um, the grandpa that I met even like even encouraged me, saying that well the、uh, the the future of Hokkien will be rely on you. So I think they are all worrying、um, the、uh, the status or the trends of Hokkien.